preparation for winter haul out, one of our many tasks that we had to complete was taking down the sails. Here you can see me removing the battens and flaking the sail so we can roll it up easily and then store it down below deck without having to worry about it getting damaged. The head sail we decided to do on the dock so we'd have more room to work. Learning took place. You can see how neat and organized a flake sail appears and also makes it very easy for rolling up in storage. Look at that butts hanging out there. Wiggle it, wiggle it. We don't have any footage, unfortunately, of actually changing the oil, but I'll quickly talk you through it. First thing you want to do is run your motor for a good 10 to 15 minutes. That heats up the oil and then it's much easier to get out. So what I personally use is a pump like this. It comes with numerous hoses uh, that attach and to this point right here. And basically this pump, when you pump it, creates a vacuum and then that sucks the oil right out of your engine and the tube you just slide into your dipstick holder down into the oil pan make sure it's all the way in there a few pumps and then it starts automatically sucking the oil out of the engine every once in a while you need to pump it a little bit more increase the pressure um, but actually changing the oil is very simple and easy to do when I purchase my oil, I get it from a local auto parts store. I make sure that they have a recycle program so then I can properly dispose of my used oil. I just... So here's my oil filter. Here's my fuel filter. And as you can see right next to it is my dipstick where I would place the hose to remove the oil from the engine. Dang it, I forgot something. So a little side note, Dan is terrified of heights. So going up and down this ladder is always challenging for him. It's almost there. Got it, and the crowd cheers, yay! How do we get antifreeze into this motor? So right here is the water pump, and this is the water inlet from the through hole. So I already took off the clamp and I'm gonna remove this, this hose. I have four feet of clear hosing and for this, I don't really need a clamp since this hose is not gonna be permanently affixed on here and I'm gonna be watching it. And then I got a trusty five gallon bucket and I'll fill the bucket up with the antifreeze Put the hose in the bucket, we run the motor, the water pump does its job, and then when we have pink fluid shooting out the back of the boat, then the water uh, is out of the engine and it's full of antifreeze, and then we can shut it off, and then the engine will be 100% ready for startup next year. Hey, how's it going? Straightening out my hose. So now we're going to run the motor and suck about six gallons of antifreeze up to the heat exchange and all through the motor. So when we get our fridge temps, then uh, it should be protected. Make sure you're always using biodegradable antifreeze. Uh, we're put the boat in. Obviously, there'll still be some in the engine when we start it in the spring. We want to make sure we're not harming any fish or wildlife. As soon as I started the motor, the antifreeze immediately started getting sucked up through the hose, into the engine, and through the heat exchange. Alright, so now just to wrap this job up, all I do is reapply the water inlet hose from the seacock, put the clamp on, I'll tighten that up, and when rising your motor is that easy. All right, now we're going to clean the head. So again, with the biodegradable antifreeze, 
we have our uh, toilet switch to pump dry, which is going to take all the antifreeze, run it through the water lines, and then into the holding tank. We're going to dump and pump. Dump and pump. What are we doing? We are dumping <laughs> and pumping. The one thing we weren't able to capture on camera was emptying the water line that went from the seacock into the head so make sure you don't forget about that line the last thing we have to do to finish winterizing the head is the bathroom has its own bilge so i saved a little of the antifreeze from the dump and pump so then you just pour a couple inches of antifreeze in there turn on that bilge Get some antifreeze in the hose, and bathroom's done. Hey, Dan. Yeah. What you doing? I am disconnecting the hot water heater. Looks like kind of a hot mess in there. It is a hot mess. Oh. Speaking of hot messes, since we just finished the toilet, when they pump the toilet out of the black tank, that's the poop holes. And this is a giant poop... Shut off valve. <laughs> nice. Good information to know. Yeah. Alrighty. And actually another little quirk about this boat. I'm actually laying on the fuel tank, but the water fuel filter separator is all the way up here behind the uh, dining room table. So if you have an old Catalina 36 and can't find your water fuel separator, that's where it's at. But now I'm going to get back to... Uh, disconnected this water hose. Okay, so while Dan is trying to figure out this hot water heater thingy, I'm trying to go over this paperwork the previous owner did with his little drawings and all the checklist. He was super great at all of that because he did a little typed up checklist. You can tell it's really old because of the font and the paper that's being used. So, here is the diagram that we are trying to make sense of where stuff goes. So this is what he's playing off of. Then this guy, he even did like a little checklist of all the items we would need prior to start winterizing the boat, along with like step-by-step -step instructions. And then again, some more checklists of things to make sure that you do to make sure that the boat is properly winterized. So. Thank you, previous boat owner. Appreciate that. So we're pumping the water heater full of air to force the rest of the water out of the water heater through the pipes. While Julie pumps, I'm holding the air hose on the water intake on the hot water heater and we're forcing air through the hot water heater pushing all the excess water out. You can run radiator fluid or antifreeze through there, but it's a six gallon hot water heater and it adds up. Careful, oh no. <laughs> there my hand. Good. <laughs> it's always a good idea to shop back out your bilge as well. Get it as dry as possible for winter storage. We got that all dried out. Um, now I got a little extra antifreeze and then gonna just pour that in the bilge near the bilge pump. Just keep everything from freezing up. Now we just poured another gallon in there since we had extra and plenty and uh, turn it on the bilge pump. So now the bilge is sucking it out and pushing out the back of the boat. So if there's any water buildup in the uh, bilge line itself, now that'll be full of antifreeze as well. And don't have to worry about that freezing. So one more thing you want to do while you're winterizing the boat is to disconnect the batteries. That way nothing's drawing on the amperage and uh, absolutely killing them. So since we already got the bilge taken care of, we well, don't have to worry about the bilge pump uh, running constantly or, you know, on a safety. So we're disconnecting the batteries. And as you can see, there's lots of wires. I already got one battery disconnected. 
and make sure you label everything. This is battery number two, negative terminal. So I have white tape so I can see it in the spring and it's clearly annotated number two, negative. So now I'm gonna disconnect battery number one and tape all the terminals up and mark them the same. All right, so we just finished winterization and uh, it can be a daunting task if you're a new boat owner or thinking about buying a boat. Um, again, one thing I highly recommend and, and stress are checklists. Make lists of everything you need to get done and a lot of it, we actually got accomplished while we were at the marina. Um, we got right. all our personal stuff off the boat. We actually got the oil changed at the marina. Um, really, there was only a few things we had to wait till we were on the hard to do. And that was uh, running the antifreeze through the engine, um, the bilge, um, you know, the head. Uh, those types of things. I want to give a shout out to my good friend, my mentor, and my teacher, Ben Poucher from Warrior Sailing. Because without him, <laughs> I wouldn't have this knowledge. So Ben, thank you for your patience and just this amazing gift of sailing that, that you've given the, not only me, but you've given us. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. So we're in the process of winterizing the boat and um, just a little for anyone wanting technical information. So I'm very distracted. Spotlight's on you, sir. <laughs> really? Okay. Why are you messing up my scene? Because <laughs> I didn't move yet. And now we're just going to go through the whole thing of me getting in your way again. 